12 content creator myths that are total lies. Okay, the first one that I wanna bring up is that you're gonna hear all the time. Maybe your parents are telling you this, maybe your aunt and uncle, maybe your grandma. They're telling you something like, you are wasting your life making videos and live streaming and getting no real skills by doing this in the process. And I want to tell all of you guys that that is dead freaking wrong. It couldn't be more wrong. Here's why. I am constantly hiring people myself and businesses are hiring people nonstop, especially since COVID-19 happened with skills that they can use here in their studio, in your home studio, that you are gaining as a content creator that are the jobs and the skills of the future. So if anybody's telling you, you aren't doing a real job or you're not gonna make it or any of those things as a content creator, I wanna tell you that all the skills you're learning here are applicable to real jobs in real life. Let me just share a few examples with you. So virtually every business has gone, had to go digital and had to go remote. And so they are all looking for things like, oopsie, social media managers, they're looking for graphic designers, they're looking for video editors, they're looking for people to do live streams for them or their webinars, they're looking for people to set up their website, they're looking for people to run their email, they're looking for people to help them set up their webcams, their microphones, their OBS. Every business from real estate agents to yoga teachers to uh, big mega corps to financial guys to stock guys, they all need someone with your skills to help them basically cross the gap from the traditional job space into this new digital space that you guys are already successful in as content creators. So the whole point of me telling you that is you have professional skills that are useful. You have professional skills that you should not be undervaluing. And I wanna share that. And let me just show you here on the screen what you can be doing in terms of your career path. If you haven't already content creators, set up a LinkedIn profile. There's almost a billion people on LinkedIn right now. And what you can do is set up your content profile and add your skills here on LinkedIn, including your graphic design capabilities. You can add things like your uh, YouTube channel, your Twitch affiliate or Twitch partnership. You can upload some of the videos you've created here. You can add skills and get endorsements from people that you've worked with, licenses and certifications, courses that you've taken related to graphic design, social media management, etc. Put it on your LinkedIn profile and open yourself up using the feature here on LinkedIn. The click open to and you can click the open to hiring. Okay, and share that you're hiring and attracting qualified candidates if you're hiring or if you're looking for a job, you can click find a new job. Why do I share this? This is just an example, guys, of how the skills that you're that you have right now, the skills that you're acquiring as a content creator are applicable to the real life job market. You will get contacted when people see that you're a graphic designer, when they see that you can help them with their webinar, when you see when they see that they can, you can help them with their webcam, when they see that you have experience being successful on the internet, because every single business, every single person, every person moving forward in the world is going to have to increasingly have your skills in order to succeed on the internet. So anyone that tells you that content creators are wasting their time live streaming, you're wasting your time playing video games and learning these skills, they couldn't be more wrong. They should be teaching the skills that you're learning as a content creator in school because these are essential skills moving into the 2020s, 2030s, and 2040s. This is the way the world is right now. You don't pick up an encyclopedia to learn anything anymore. You don't listen to the radio. It's all on the internet. You have to have these skills just to survive in our new digital economy moving forward. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That is a myth I wanted to dispel right when we get this thing started. I've got 11 more myths that I want to dispel here, some of which you may be thinking about that could be holding you back. Stay tuned for the whole thing to the very end because I want to change your mindset and change the mindset of others to help everybody realize your full potential as a content creator. Let's pay the bills. This video is sponsored by Restream. Why live stream to one platform when you can simultaneously live stream to every platform to discover new audiences faster? using Restream.io. All right, the next myth that's out there, good to see everybody in chat, Andy, BKO, Constantine, everybody that watches live, Grogu, Gaming Chronicles, all good to see you live while I'm doing this. One take, baby. The next one is that you need to get a lot of views in order to go full-time as a content creator. This is a total myth. Everybody, when they see big content creators out there, they're thinking, okay, I've gotta get my views up. I gotta get my subs up. That's the only way I can go full-time and I can make enough money in order to go full-time. 
That's what they're thinking. And when they look at other creators, they look at their sub count, they look at their view count in order to assess how viable that creator was, right? In their ability to go full time. I couldn't, I couldn't emphasize enough how wrong that is. Let me just show you what I mean on the screen right now. So this is just my personal YouTube channel. I just went full time again, only doing content and coaching and what have you a few months ago. I only get 275,000 views per month on this one channel. In this one channel, you're right guys, it only makes $1,100 per month just off of those views. Now you might be saying, hey, well, why are you bragging about your money? I'm not bragging about my money. The point of this is this, the views I'm getting on my channel only generate 1.1K in revenue per month from YouTube monetization. And I know for a lot of you guys out there, that's not enough money for you to go full time. I coach a lot of you guys that are in chat right now one on one. And a lot of you guys are kind of telling me I need to make 3000 per month, 4000 per month, maybe even more per month, 5000 plus in some cases, uh, depending on your cost of living to go full time and that dollar amount is not enough. So you might be thinking I need to get my views up in order to go full time to make enough money to pay the bills, right? The answer to that is no, not necessarily. That is a myth. That is a myth that I want to dispel right now. What you need to do is better monetize the views that you already have. Okay. And so one way to do that, you might be, so anybody who kind of passes by my channel and I get comments like this all the time, people tell me, Hey, well, your channel's not that big. Why are you advising people on how to go full time? Guys, I'm making six figures working from home every single year right now. I'm going to make more money this year as a content creator than ever. I think I'm going to break over $250,000 this year as a content creator. What you're only getting what you only get like a couple hundred views per video when you release them on your channel. How is that even freaking possible? It's not a brag. Here's why here's how it's because I'm monetizing my channel effectively. Let me inspire you and dispel this myth. Okay, sure. I only get a half a million views right here, but I've got other revenue streams set up to monetize off of that, including and I've brought this up a few times. Amazon Associates is one extra revenue stream on top. I make $3,000 on top of the YouTube money I have right there, $3,000 per month on top just in associates commissions when I recommend gear to people on my YouTube channel. That's stacked on top of the $1,000 per month I'm making off of that YouTube channel. Now that's about $50,000 per year with that extra revenue stream. Then on top of that, I'm stacking my, I provide a service, a coaching service. On top of that, I'm gonna make another 80 to $100,000 off of that this next year with all the one-on-one -on -one coaching I'm doing. You guys could stack on top of your YouTube channel, graphic design, making people emotes, doing video editing, doing social media man management, doing channel management, uh, doing advertising, running somebody's Facebook page, running their Twitter account, helping them set up their webcam, uh, helping somebody with their OBS, all of those skills that you have, you can stack on top and use your YouTube channel as a way to market that. The reason why I bring that up with you guys is that the amount of views that you're getting on your channel does not determine the whether you're paying your bills or not. It's whether you're being smart in how you monetize your channel in order to succeed. And if you can provide value to customers and use your channel to market yourself, you can go full time as a creator with a relatively small amount of views. That's only two myths. We've got 10 more myths. Are you guys enjoying this? I want to blow your mind. I hope at least a couple of these blow your mind. Yeah, I didn't quit my job as an executive for no reason, guys. Like I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to brag on the amount of money I made. I used to make a lot of money as a media executive. It's not a brag. And I quit my job because I felt like I could make even more and be even more successful as a content creator because I've been advising people on how to make money on the internet. I decided why not go make my own money on the internet. <laughs> and so I'm sharing all of this strategy that I learned over time that I've advised people on with you right now for free. All right, beautiful. Let's keep going. So another myth that um, this one's so prevalent across the board, but another myth is that gaming streamers just play video games on the internet. They just play and then they just get views. I mean, it's that simple guys. It's that freaking simple. Basically all you do is you sit in your studio, you hook up your capture card to your console, you put it on your monitor, you set up your mic and your microphone. And you know what? You just close your eyes and you say, here I go. I am going to go full time. People are going to watch me. I'm going to make a living doing this. Let's freaking go. It's totally going to work out, right? Well, that is a huge myth. Just playing games on the internet is not good enough to make it as a content creator anymore. You have to be thinking, how do I add extra value on top 
of my content? How can I break out? How can I be unique uh, in order to break out in the market right now? And there are currently 12 million people streaming on the internet right now, gaming streamers, that think they have some sort of pipe dream that they can just play video games and somehow magically get enough views or enough viewers or enough Twitch bits or enough Twitch subs or Facebook stars to somehow like some kind of magic go full time. And I'm telling you that is a myth. It is totally, it's just a myth. It's absolutely dispelled. Less than 1% of 1% of 1% will actually be able to pull that off. And so if you want my help tonight, tonight, I'm offering $1 coaching to you guys. If you want to jump in, I bet some of you guys in chat, I know some of you guys have already taken me up on this offer. This is not a gimmick. This is not a marketing catch. This is literally $1 coaching. I normally charge $150 to $250 per hour for coaching with me. It is $1 tonight. Jump in there. There's, I'm not selling you anything. It's not a webinar. I'm not selling you a product. You literally jump in there and I can help you brainstorm some ideas to get your content off the ground. One effing dollar. I just put it into chat right now. It's in the description below. If you don't sign up for this, you're crazy. Why wouldn't you take me up on this? I've been doing this for a living for the last 10 years. You'd be crazy not to take me up on this. No catch. Seriously, no catch. Um, just, I'm just trying to help people out. A ton, to millions of people lost their jobs in COVID. I'm just trying to give you guys an opportunity to get top-notch coaching. You shouldn't have to make a certain dollar amount to be able to get good advice, okay? Moving on to the other myths here. Um, the next one is that content creation is not a real quote unquote job. It's not a real job. <laughs> this one is one that comes up all of the time. And it's this sort of like, uh, let's say societal uh, issue with, with, uh, with content creation where, you know, your mom or your dad, they maybe want you to be a doctor. They maybe want you to be a lawyer. They maybe want you to do a traditional real job. Well, let me tell you this. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant. This one pisses me off. You know what's not a real job anymore? The real jobs. The economy blew up with COVID-19. And what we saw with massive layoffs, all the real jobs out there, all the restaurant jobs, hotel jobs, AV jobs, the jobs I used to do before I became a marketing executive, they all blew up and went away. So all these quote unquote real jobs that are safe and secure, that whole idea of having a nine to five job that's safe and secure anymore, it's not real. That's not real anymore, man. Things are so much more volatile. Nobody sticks with a job for 5, 10, 15, 20 years anymore and has job security. That's not real anymore. So anyone that tells you that content creation is not a real job has no idea where the world is going. The world is going increasingly more internet, more live streaming, more social media, more technology. And the real jobs of the future are contract jobs, freelance jobs, internet entrepreneurship, side hustle, these ways of cobbling together an income from multiple sources to pay your bills by working from home. That's the new reality that we live in, and it is not going back to the way it was in the 1980s. It's not going back. So that is a complete myth, in my opinion. Uh, thank you, BKO. The content creator group coaching is so worth it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I will post one more time the link to the uh, $1 group coaching in Restream chat. It'll hit all the chats right now. There you go. Um, perfect. So I just think it's so ridiculous to think that a real job isn't content creation. I think it's more real than ever. I think we should be teaching kids in school digital literacy right now as a class that they start taking from sixth grade on. You need to be taking six years of digital literacy class to learn graphic design, video editing, uh, internet security, how to keep your identity safe, how to uh, create social media profiles, how to interact with people through voice comms, how to, how to troubleshoot technology. This is the stuff, these are the things you need in the future, okay? Those are the skills of the future, not how to use a beaker in a science lab. I'm sorry, but those are not skills that you need in everyday life right now. You need to learn how to use digital things, technology. Technology has accelerated so quickly that content creation is more of a real job. So anybody that tells you that, tell them to get the hell out of your life because they're full of crap. Here is another myth. I went off a little bit on that one, but I feel very strongly about it. All right, here's another myth. Uh, the more you stream, the faster you'll grow. <laughs> this one's great. So it used to be the case back when I got started on YouTube and Twitch, like in 2012, and I became a Twitch partner for the first time uh, that you could grind, you could stream a bunch and you could grow. Yay. 
Yay. Well, not anymore. Uh, so streaming more does not equal more growth. Uh, grinding, bad idea. And so what you see a lot of people doing on Twitch, for example, is, and we'll just pull up Twitch just here, you know, just as an example, you see a lot of people on Twitch uh, streaming, putting up lots of big hours, like the big streamers that you see that are here for their front page, the folks that are like full-time Twitch creators, you see them, a lot of people see them as an example of what you should be doing for streaming. Well, they're streaming a lot of hours, so I guess I should stream a lot of hours too. Why? Because that's what the big guys do, so therefore that's what I should do too, right? So the reason why they're streaming a lot of hours is because they've already built up an audience and they've learned how to monetize that audience. And so by streaming more, they are able to make more money. Let me clarify. Basically what I'm saying is these folks that are streaming a bunch on Twitch and grinding and making it, they've already discovered a successful business model and then they're doubling down on it. But if you are yet to build an audience and build a successful business model on Twitch, Grinding more on Twitch will not get you any results, okay? So let's say, for example, on Twitch, let's do some business calculations here. I want to help you think about this like an ice-cold corpo, like me, an ice-cold corporate executive. Think about it like me. If on Twitch you do the calculation that, you know, when I'm streaming, I get this many bits, this many subs, this many donos, this many patrons, and you can do a calculation of I make, let's say, $50 per hour on Twitch. Okay, now you're at a point where you make a certain dollar amount per hour that is perhaps enough for you to make a living off of, 50 an hour, is just as a number. Now that you have a successful model that you can prove that if you put in hours into Twitch, you get a certain amount per hour, then you can invest more hours into that business model and make a living. But until you have an average amount of money that you make per hour streaming that is high enough to support you paying your monthly bills, then don't dump more hours into it, right? It's just like working a job, right? If, if you were streaming on Twitch and on average you make $5 an hour, that's probably not enough money for you to make a living. And so, streaming more, therefore, does not make sense. Make sense? Thank you. Uh, Shorecat just signed up for my $1 coaching and so did Grogu. That's great. Thank you very much for signing up. I can't wait to see you guys tonight. Here's the next myth. The more subscribers you have as a content creator, the more successful you are. Oh, God. This one just slays me deep inside when people think this one it's so ridiculous uh so and this one hits me all the time uh for example um with my channels so people come to my channels my my brand new channels i just created on youtube just as an example and they're like how can you be advising anyone how to go full time they, they tell me and everybody gets this when they're a smaller creator along the way how can you be advising anyone on how to go full time as a creator when you only have and they go glance at your channel and they're like such and such amount of subs. And so this is such a myth. It's such a uh, it's so incorrect to think about successful content creation and a successful content creator business model in this way. It's ridiculous. Do you remember what I just told you guys a moment ago? Let me pull this up on the screen. This year, my goal is to make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a content creator. But people that have the myth in their head thinking the number of subscribers I have on my channel is the amount of success I have is totally bogus. This podcast, I just started this new channel. It's only got 51 subscribers. So somebody will come by this channel, my AWOL podcast channel that I'm going to upload the replay to. They're going to come over here and be like, this guy's only got 51 subs. What a joke. This guy has no idea how to be successful. But I'm making more money as a content creator and doing what I love than... 99.9999999% of creators. I'm in the top echelon of creators. So assuming that someone's success or how well they're doing is some gauge of their subscribers on YouTube or their followers on Twitter is absolutely preposterous. What truly matters, what truly matters here in this process is whether you're fulfilling your own goals. Are you happy creating content? Are you able to pay your bills and hit your financial goals? Okay, are you growing and getting the recognition that you want on the internet to feel okay about yourself? <laughs> Seriously, these are the things that matter. So if you're able to make a living off of 1,000 YouTube subscribers and you're happy, to hell with anybody that comes to your channel and tells you otherwise. You're hitting your goals, okay? So subscribers are not a gauge of success, you understand? Cool. Here's the next myth. YouTube monetization is enough 
to pay your bills. Bring back the facial hair. I'm not bringing back the facial hair for a little while, Corrupt. I will. I will later. I grew the beard in the first place when I had a kid. But YouTube monetization is enough to go full-time as a content creator. This is a myth. Uh, and here's why. Have you ever heard of YouTube apocalypse? I'm sure you guys have. The ad apocalypse. It's happened three or four times now where YouTube has an oopsie. You know, some channel posts some Nazi stuff or something, or some channel posts some racist N-bomb video or something, and then Coca-Cola's ad is on there. Somebody takes a screenshot and tweets it, and then it goes viral, and all the advertisers pull out on YouTube, and all of a sudden, ad revenue tanks. Ever heard of that before? Adpocalypse. It's happened before in the past. It's going to happen again, okay? They're going to have some kind of PR disaster where some crazy conspiracy theory channel who thinks that the earth is flat and, uh, you know, politicians are doing the turning people into pizza or whatever may happen. Uh, Nike's ad is going to play on there. And all of a sudden there's going to be a PR disaster and ad rates all go down because the big advertisers pull out. If you're depending entirely on your YouTube revenue to make a living, this is a huge problem for you because your advertising revenue on YouTube will go down maybe 20%, 50%, in some cases, 60 plus percent. And I've worked with creators that uh, that I've coached that are making about $50,000 per month, which is gangster, right? That's really, really good. But then when Adpocalypse hit, they went down to like 6,000. That sort of jump in revenue down for a few months or six months or how who, who knows how long Adpocalypse, the next one will last, is a massive impact. Man, they had employees they were paying, okay? They had graphic designers. They had servers they were paying for, advertisements they were paying for. They had this whole online business, and all of a sudden, all the YouTube revenue went away. Yikes. That's a huge issue. And so you need to diversify your revenue, and YouTube monetization is not enough. So so many people are looking at YouTube monetization as like the end-all be-all. I need to get YouTube partnership, and I'm going to make it as a creator. Yay. No. That should only be one third or less of your income. Personally, it's only about 10, 15% of my income, 10% so of my income. Diversify your revenue. It's not enough to pay your bills. Here is the next myth. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys enjoying this? <laughs> what on flat earth do you love about this live stream? Let me know. I like your comments about flat earth. That's good. Okay, here's the next one. Streaming exclusively on Twitch is a path to success. Yes, this one is a classic one. It's a great path to success to stream on Twitch. It's absolutely preposterous. Streaming exclusively on Twitch is what? Are you kidding me? I mean, if you look at half of the games on Twitch, uh, the vast majority of the uh, streamers that are streaming these games have zero views. I mean, let's just sort, sort low to high here. This is just League of Legends. I'm picking a random game. I'm not cherry picking this. And let's just go through the army the hordes of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of streamers. Let's just keep going. These all are zero viewer Andes. Now they are one viewer Andes, which let's be real. They're one, they're zero viewers. Let's keep going. I'm not doing this to make fun of these people. I'm trying to show this to you because if you want to get to the top on Twitch, if you want to straight live stream full time, you have to get over this zombie horde of streamers in order to actually make it. You have to get over the pile of the literally millions of people that are streaming on Twitch and just playing video games and thinking that they're gonna make it. All these people haven't adjusted their thinking. They haven't thought what is going to be valuable to my viewers. Why should somebody tune into my live stream? We're still looking at one viewer streams on one game. This is the zombie horde of people that if you just go live, you're competing against. What makes you think somebody's just going to randomly discover your stream at the bottom of a pile of 60,000 streams on Twitch? Ain't no way anybody's going to find your stream here in the zombie horde. I mean, just seriously, there's no way it's going to happen. And so streaming exclusively on Twitch is a terrible idea, and anybody that tells you that you should is full of it. And so I want to encourage all of you guys to restream. I'm currently restreaming myself to multiple platforms. Sponsored link in description. Restream sponsors this podcast. Thank you so much. I've been using Restream for three or four years for my corporate clients, for my full-time creator clients, you name it. It's amazing. You can go live on all of these platforms and juice out 
all of the concurrent viewership from Trovo, DLive, from even Periscope on Twitter, from YouTube and Twitch and Facebook gaming, and any platform that comes up in the future, juice out all of the free viewership you can get from all of these platforms by sending one signal to restream and having it go out. I'm currently restreaming. I am quadrupled my viewership. I'm looking at my numbers right now because I'm on multiple platforms at the same time. Please, for the love of God, restream. What if Mixer goes down again? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Mixer's already dead. I'm not literally saying Mixer, but what if Facebook gaming goes out of business and you went all in there? You're screwed. What if your YouTube channel gets copy struck into oblivion and you went all in there? You're screwed. What happens? What if, what if, what if? You need to safeguard yourself and safeguard your online business by streaming to multiple platforms on at the same time. But wait, there's more. I'm only halfway done with the myths here. Here comes some the fuego ones. For those of you that tuned in later, here come the better myths. Okay, the next myth is that you have to clickbait in order to get views. You, you have to clickbait in order to get views. So a lot of people think, they kind of like look down on creators that create very clickable thumbnails on YouTube, right? Uh, and so they look at them and they're like, that guy's clickbaiting. They, they like kind of write them off as clickbaiters and they're like, I will never stoop to a low, my friend. They adjust their monocle, oh dear. I will never stoop to a low to in so much as try to get a click on YouTube or try to get a click on Twitch or Facebook gaming. I am too proper for that. Like this whole attitude that you're too good to make a title and a thumbnail that are clickable is absolutely preposterous. You have to get a click on your content before anybody's going to watch. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how good your personality is. You've got to get the click. Let me share a quote unquote clickbaiter with you for you to learn from. Don't view clickbaiters as the enemy. That is a myth. They are not the enemy. They are a teacher. Anybody who's getting clicks on YouTube or any other platform, it is a learning opportunity for you to figure out how you can get clicks. And as soon as you flip your thinking like that and stop looking at clickbaiters as some sort of enemy or the, an impure creator and learn from what they're doing, the sooner you can succeed. Let's take Ali A as an example. Look, I'm not gonna hold Ali A up as the pinnacle of all YouTubers here. A lot of people have accused Ali A of being the ultimate clickbaiter on YouTube. Maybe you guys are familiar with this channel, okay? But what I want you to do instead when you look at thumbnails that look clickbaity, I want you to instead cast the myth that they're the enemy aside and then look at their thumbnails and figure out what is it that they're doing in their titles and their thumbnails that you can use for your success? Let me repeat that one more time. What are they doing in their titles and their thumbnails that you can use for your success? That's all that matters. And so one thing you could learn from these thumbnails, for example, is he uses arrows. But why do you use arrows in the thumbnails, you may ask? This is just an example. To create a singular point of focus. And so if you're going to use an arrow, make sure the arrow is pointing to the most important thing in the thumbnail, not to some random thing. Cool, something you could learn from Ali A. Another thing you could learn from Ali A is having shocked or surprised faces gets more views within this niche. So you could take a shocked or surprised face approach with large eyes and open mouth as another best practice that he's using in these thumbnails. Now you might be saying, that's clickbait, that's garbage, I'll never do that. No. What he's teaching you through his clickbait thumbnails is exactly how to get clicks. And if you aren't getting clicks, guess who's getting them? He is. You get it? And the people that are willing to do what it takes to get a click while still representing what the content all about are the ones that are going to be successful. So if you think you're too high and mighty to do what it takes to get a click, then guess what? You aren't getting a click. End of story, okay? Is keeping it real with you. That is a myth that you have got to dispel. You've got to change your thinking on that. Here's another one. A lot of people think that women have it a lot easier than men do when it comes to streaming. For example, um, if you're an attractive female, like let's take Pokemane, for example. And this is yet another excuse that people use for not being successful. But let's take Pokemon, for example. Um, she's an attractive female. I'm not saying that to be weird or whatever. She just is, right? She's a cute, she's a cute female. And she uses that to her advantage. But 
she actually monetizes worse than a lot of the men do in the same space. And I've seen long interviews with her that she's done with other creators where, oh, and you look at the numbers across the board, women overall do worse in the streaming industry and in the creator industry than men do, especially in the gaming space. They get less viewers, they get less monetization, and they get less engagement on the streaming platforms, despite the fact that their quality and their content might be just as good. So the reason why I bring this up isn't to be some social justice warrior or some white knight or whatever. I'm not doing it to do that. The point of me bringing up Pokemon or other female YouTubers is the myth is that women have it easier than men. And here's the part, here's the reason why I brought this up, not to bring light to some social issue. I, I, that doesn't matter that much to me. The point of this is that I think a lot of people target women having it easier than men as an excuse for them not being successful. A lot of people will say, if only I was an attractive female with boobs or whatever, then I could get a lot more views a lot easily. Mathematically, if you were a female, you would have a harder time making it. I advise full-time female creators. And when I talk to them, they have all sorts of challenges that you don't have as a man. And so I want to bring that up because don't use that as an excuse. Don't use how attractive someone is versus you as an excuse for your lack of success and for you not doing what it takes for you to grow on your own, okay? That's an excuse that you're just holding yourself back with. You feel me? You don't have to be down with the social part of it or feminism or whatever. You don't have to be in on that part of it if you don't want to be. The part I want you to do is stop using it as an excuse to hold yourself back. You feel me? You might say, I, I should be more attractive if I was in better shape. If I lost weight, if my hair looked better, if I had a better microphone, all these things, like all these other people have these things I don't, therefore I'm not successful. No, you need to focus on what's in your control, okay? Does that make sense? That's a myth. You got to cast that away, my friends. You got to get it out of here, okay? Perfect. All right. Next myth that we got to get out of here. Oh no, this one's so bad. I was debating whether I was going to bring this one up or not, but I got to keep it. I always keep it real with you guys. You guys know I respect you and I keep it real. So I'm going to keep it real with this one. This myth is if you work hard enough, you eventually will make it. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know this one is really savage, but it's true that if you work hard enough, you are not necessarily guaranteed to make it. I'm sorry. So... <laughs> Let me bring up an example right here. His name is Rurikon, and he has made it as hard as possible on himself as a gaming content creator. I'm interviewing him next week. He's a full-time creator. He's getting like 500 to 600 concurrent viewers on YouTube. And a lot of people think that if you just work hard, you'll eventually get views down the road. You know what? Maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years down the road, maybe you'll get there. But if you're wanting to go full time in any sort of reasonable amount of time, you're going to have to make sacrifices along the way to do it. And not all of you guys can be Rurikon. Rurikon is somebody who started creating content even before I did 12 years ago. And he did not reach success on YouTube as a gaming creator. He's very successful now for like a thousand videos. So the point of me bringing up Rurikon is he just stuck to his guns and he only did what he wanted to do. And eventually 1,000 videos later, he made it. But do you guys have 1,000 videos in you before you make it? Do you really have 1,000 videos in you before you end up reaching your goal? The answer is 99.9999% of you guys don't. And so what you guys have to do Cast that myth aside that if you just work hard enough, you'll just hit your goal in the amount of time you want. No, it's probably going to just take a way longer period of time than you think. So in order to succeed as a content creator, and I just got to have this, I got to throw this out there. You've got to sacrifice in one category or the other in order to make it. Okay, so what do I mean by that? You have the emotional and creative satisfaction category. You have the financial success category, and you have the audience growth category. And Almost always, if you want to succeed in one of these three categories, you have to sacrifice in one of the others in order to do it. So let's say, for example, right now, you're playing only the games that you love. You're getting that emotional fulfillment. And you're not really getting that many views, though, and you're not really making that much money. Ugh, it might suck because the game that you're playing on your channel, nobody cares about it, and there's no opportunity. So you might have to play a game that you only kind of like, 
on your channel and decrease your emotional and creative satisfaction. And then if you play a game that you kind of like, but is viable, your audience growth could go up and your revenue could go up. You see the sacrifice? You have to sacrifice in one category in order to get the other categories to go up. It is a myth that if you just work hard enough doing whatever you wanna do that you'll make it. I'm sorry, that is just straight up not true. You have to make sacrifices and you can't have it all at all times. I'm sorry if I sound like your dad or whatever, bringing that up to you, but it's just straight up true. Now, I wanna make it easier for you guys to succeed as content creators, so I'm doing a gaming creator bundle sweepstakes where I'm giving away for free, no catch, $1,100 in free equipment, including the microphone that you're listening to right now, including the mixer that you're listening to me on right now, including a three month license uh, for TubeBuddy and for Restream. Three month license here. Link in the chat, link in the description below. You can enter to win absolutely for free. Thank you to Rode, TubeBuddy and Restream for sponsoring this giveaway. I really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely amazing. You guys can enter to win. We're giving this package away once per quarter, okay? Once per quarter. Great. So let's move on to doing the final myth of the episode. The final myth is this. Buying views and followers will boost you in the algorithm. Buying views and followers will boost you in the algorithm or help you grow in some capacity or not. Let me tell you, it absolutely is not the case. If you buy followers, they're fake and they're not going to engage with your content. If you buy viewers, they're fake and they're not going to engage with your content. And what are the main things with almost every content algorithm out there that matter? Getting clicks and getting viewership on your content. So if all of your followers are fake and all of your views are fake, Whenever you release content in the future, it's going to release it to fake viewers. So you aren't going to get the clicks and you aren't going to get the uh, audience retention. And so if you're seeing services out there that are offering you a quick path to success, I'm not endorsing the site. I'm just showing an example of buy YouTube subscribers for free. They aren't going to help you at all. Do not buy them. This is actually going to decrease your success by buying viewers and by buying subscribers. Okay. Do not buy views, do not buy subscribers. It'll slow your growth down and you could potentially be permanently banned from these platforms, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, etc., by purchasing any of these things. Worst thing you can do ever. I've seen creators game the system and lose it all like that. Because once YouTube detects the particular set of fake followers that these services use and they can find out which channels have a bunch of those followers, guess what happens? your channel could be eliminated like that. And you thought you were accelerating your growth. And in fact, you were actually just destroying yourself in the process. Do not do that to yourself. You deserve better. You are better than that. Do not buy followers. That is a myth that it will accelerate you in any capacity, just straight up. Okay, great. The next myth is that you cannot get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me because you can. So. <laughs> Here we go. If you want to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, you can go to awalldigital.com and you can schedule one-on-one -on -one coaching today. And you can just basically go uh, to my website. You can pull up the schedule one-on-one -on -one coaching button right here. And you can book me. Just go to the calendar, pick your day, pick your time, and go ahead and tell me your challenges, tell me your goals, pay for the session, and boom, I'm on a one-on-one -on -one call with you, helping you succeed as a content creator, whether it is technical items, whether it is social media strategy, you name it, link in the description below, awalldigital.com, A-W-A-L-L digital.com. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And if you don't do anything at all, just share this, this video, this replay with one creator or one person that needed to see it to dispel these myths. Let's get these myths out of the way to get straight to your success. Thank you for watching.